In today's video, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, a recent Hamfest find. It's a nice little compact uh, homemade antenna tuner or transmatch. It was built into an old power supply case. The antenna input uh, here and transmit input here, a bypass switch on this side, and then our controls to actually operate the tuner here, and a couple of trimmers and another switch out front. So let's go take a deeper look at what's inside and uh, see if this thing works. Right, so let's slide the, the case off of here and uh, take a look at what we have inside. So uh, a really pretty good size roller inductor. Okay, and we've got a small variable capacitor here and a larger variable capacitor down here. These two trimmer adjustments are actually a couple of uh, multi-layer kind of compression caps, but more of a you know, fixed type of thing, you set it and forget it type of a thing. And we can see the switches kind of go in place here. So given that we've got two capacitors and an inductor, all variable, uh, this is uh, most likely a T or a Pi network tuner. So uh, I took the time to uh, kind of trace out the schematic here, and it turns out it is actually a Pi network tuner. So let's take a look at the schematic. All right, so here's the uh, schematic for the Pi network tuner. Our transmit input is here, antenna output is right there uh, and there's uh, the smaller of the two variable capacitors is uh, is right here going to ground uh, we go through the variable inductor here to the antenna and then the larger variable capacitor is uh, out here on the antenna terminal and then those two uh, multi-layer um, kind of trimmer caps are these two guys right here and they're connected to a switch that allows you to flip those uh, capacitors into circuit or not. And uh, you know, part of the reason I think for having this is that these uh, variable capacitors are relatively small, 140 picofarads or so maximum and 180 picofarads on this one. And those are going to be pretty small uh, in terms of usable values, especially at lower frequencies. Uh, so, you know, probably uh, 75 meters and certainly 160. I doubt that we'd get uh, enough capacitance for 160 even with these extra capacitors switched in. But uh, but the tuner will probably work well from 40 on up or certainly 20 meters on up without any problem. Uh, similarly, the inductor here is a about a 10 microhenry um, variable inductor, and most kind of commercial tuners who uh, Pi network tuners would have probably more like a, a 20 microhenry inductor. So there's going to be a limited tuning range here, but uh, you know, for a small compact tuner that I got for literally $15, <laughs> I uh, certainly can't complain. So um, there's a bypass switch here that allows you to essentially bypass the tuner altogether when you're dealing with a resonant antenna, or if you want to tune up into a dummy load or something like that first, and then you can. Uh, you know, come out of bypass and actually use the tune circuit to adjust the impedance of your antenna system uh, to uh, make the transmitter look like it's looking into its ideal load or a match load, most often 50 ohms. Now, I didn't label the values of these little uh, compression caps here because I didn't measure them. Um, I think they're, they're probably on the order of a few hundred picofarads, uh, but we can always go back and measure them later on, but uh, that's why those are not uh, indicated here on the schematic. So let's go see if uh, this thing works. We'll hook up a load to it and uh, a little uh, antenna analyzer and see if we can adjust uh, and get a good match out of a mismatched load. All right, so I just have a, uh, a little uh, BNC to banana jack adapter here with, a, I think it's about a 180 ohm resistor connected up here, so certainly not 50 ohms that the antenna analyzer wants to see. That's hooked up to the antenna terminal. Uh, so we'll turn the uh, analyzer on. Let's just do a quick check, uh, you know, in tw 20 meters. So uh, I've got the frequency adjusted here to, oh, about 14.2 uh, megahertz. Uh, good spot in the 20 meter band. Now with a Pi network tuner, you, uh, unlike a T network, you want to kind of start with the capacitors at close to their minimum value, as well as the inductor on its minimum value. So let's start with that there and uh, see if we can get a good match. All right, so we'll start by increasing the inductance here. Now we'll just watch the SWR meter here to see if we start to get any kind of a dip. I see it's starting to come down here now, so I know I'm going in the right direction. And uh, so we're getting down uh, lower here and it's then coming back up. So let's kind of find our minimum here and uh, start adjusting the capacitors to see if we can get ourselves a little bit lower. There we go. 
Now we're down to below 1.5. Let's and we just kind of kind of tweak back and forth with these adjustments, and we can get our match all the way down to a nice uh, one to one SWR. So it looks like the uh, the tuner works uh, pretty well. Let's check this thing out on uh, on 40 meters. That's another band I like to operate a lot. So I'm gonna turn this up to uh, let's go go to about. Uh, 7.14, 7.15 uh, megahertz or so on 40 meters. And uh, again, let's uh, start turning the inductance up here to see if we start getting a dip on the SWR meter. And it uh, looks like I need to add a bit more capacitance here probably to start with. Bring those guys in and then look for a dip here with the inductor. Okay, looks like we got it here. And uh, let's see. Start playing with the capacitors, bring that dip down. Look at that. We're able to bring the uh, SWR down uh, pretty darn close to looks like another 1.0, 1 1.1 1 .1 to 1 uh, match right there. So certainly enough range in the inductor here and the capacitors to match this. What well, would be about a 3 to 1 SWR, uh, you know, on this uh, with this 180 ohm resistor. But it certainly shows that uh, the tuner is certainly going to be usable even at uh, on 40 meters. Now, of course, there's certainly many more tests we can run uh, on different frequency bands with lots of different uh, types of loads to see how well we'll be able to match. But I think uh, just to kind of show that the design is functional and uh, uh, it does seem to do what you'd expect a uh, tuner to do, I think uh, we did pretty good, especially considering that I, I literally paid $15 for this uh, little homebrew tuner. And uh, that's probably uh, you know, only about... Uh, probably 20% of the cost of just the roller inductor itself if you were going to go out and try and uh, find yourself a roller inductor to build yourself a tuner so you know these caps are probably worth uh, you know 10, 10 or 20 dollars each the roller inductor is probably uh, you know 50 75 dollar item so uh, not a bad find uh, for the last ham fest of the season so I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video quick introduction to uh, a, a Pi network tuner and just kind of showing it in operation and uh, I certainly plan in the future to do some videos on impedance matching and uh, and how uh, you know, both a Pi network and a T network tuner work as well as an L network tuner uh, but uh, those are all things we'll uh, save for the future just want to give you a quick view of uh, this nifty little uh, ham fest find thanks again for watching and uh, comments are always welcome